morning, morning, millennials. millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Thursday. Hope everyone is having a wonderful week. We are, you smell that? We're so close to Friday. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good about the rest of the week. Like Cautiously I feel like optimistic. it's really downhill from here. We are belatedly celebrating hump day because T-H-E-O is in the building. He chose to sit with his auntie just for a little bit. I know he's going to leave me soon, but it means so much to me that he is up here right now. Like it's been a while. I don't well, know if you guys like pay attention to who he sits with, but he's really been choosing you over me like every single day. Well, I think he knows that mama's tired because I was up all night oh my consuming god. so much television. Oh my god, you don't even know. Three hours of the CMA Awards, premiere of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and then a very subpar, below average, mediocre episode of Real Housewives of Orange County. Plus, Five hours. I watched Watch What Happens Live because the cast of Salt Lake City was on, and it hindered my. So let me just I tell you about I heard it was my, wild, and you know, I was so tired. You didn't really miss that much, but I just wanted to see how they like interact. Were, on Watch What Happens Live because, you know, it's like when the, it, it's, they're it's, not pretending, like they're no, just being. And in Salt Lake City, like they're in charge, but like at Watch What Happens Live, like Andy's in charge. And I really just, it didn't change my opinion on anyone. I just, um, actually maybe a little bit on Lisa, like we'll discuss. Okay. We, we'll discuss because who the fuck is Lisa? Um, but no, last night I was up till 1230 watching TV and I hadn't even started Orange County and I had to watch Orange County this morning also so weird I go to turn on the CMAs last night at 8 p.m. and I can't get it on my YouTube TV and I finally realized on Twitter that YouTube TV was down for like oh that's unacceptable 40 minutes from 8 to 8 40 so it was like prime TV watching time that I got backed up on but and I wasn't planning on watching the whole CMAs me neither but they started. I was captivated. And they were such a pleasure to watch. It was a real award show. It was a breath of fresh air. It was a real award show. Like they were, there were people there. It obviously wasn't like a packed stadium or arena like it usually is. It was like a dinner party for, I would say about 50 people. But not only was it a real award show, but they don't waste time. Like the CMA awards, they go from award to performance, commercial award performance. Like I feel like other award shows, there's so much wasted time with like people trying to make jokes and monologues and all these like pre-packaged like packages. And I just, I did not plan on watching the whole thing either, but it was truly captivating. It was just, I, it was the first normal feeling thing that I've watched in a very long time. And I was like, not only am I enjoying this, but I want to encourage this. Like they found a way Mm -hmm. to have everyone in the room. We got celeb reactions. And really, because no one's booked and busy, everyone showed up. Everyone. Except for Casey Musgraves. But everybody who was nominated in the big categories was there. And like, it was just a star-studded affair. And the performances were on point. And I was really just thoroughly enjoying myself. So I was like, I'm not going to stop here to go watch OC to then come back during commercial. Like, I was like, I'm going to enjoy this. Well, I definitely wasn't going to leave the CMAs, which I was really enjoying for the Real Housewives of Orange County. Because it was just like in general, a trash franchise. And last night was in particular like a really bad episode. So I did leave a little bit to go watch Salt Lake City because I was really excited about just the prospect of a new city, a new franchise for Housewives. And it really did not disappoint. It did not disappoint. I have many thoughts on that and Orange County, which we will be recapping in our TV recap segment as usual. Yes. But it was just, um, it was a busy night for us pop culture folk. And tonight is not not different. We have Kardashians and uh, Southern Charm. Yeah. It's not terrible, but it's just a lot. No, but that I can manage. But we had three hours of CMAs, two of, so five, and then watch what happens live. So five and a half hours of television plus commercials. Oh no, five hours and 45 minutes because The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City was an hour and 15 minutes last night. I didn't even notice that it was extra long because I was just enjoying every minute of it. It was an extra 15 minutes long. Um, Also yesterday, I did something so fun. I did a a Peloton class with the Pelotosters. Mm. We did a six o'clock, one of the new Beyonce rides that we were talking about. Uh Uh-huh. And Synergy. I rode with 25 East Coast Pelotosters. We were all on the leaderboard together. And honestly, like we were all in the group after like talking about how we, I didn't PR, but a lot of people did because like we're competing with each other and like someone like goes ahead of you and then right. you want to get back. And it was really motivating and really fun. So if you like the toast and you like to Peloton, head over to the Pelotosters Facebook group because they do these group rides all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. Well, I don't have a Peloton, so I guess I'll You'll, just have I guess I'll just have to sit in bed all you day. You can always come over and Eat. use mine. No, actually, sorry, sit on the couch all day. I gotta start changing my verbiage. Oh my god, I was on the couch till twelve thirty last night. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Oh well, so I only got home at like six o'clock yesterday because I was recording my audiobook, which was honestly, I'm not gonna lie, when before I left here yesterday, I was like really dreading it because it just sounds like boring. But my god, I had so much fun. The 
Five hours just flew by, and my book is so funny, you guys. Pre-order now, girlwithnojob.com slash book, or tap the link in my bio on my Instagram. I have all the links now for Canadian retailers, um, but it really would mean a lot to me if you guys could pre-order it. It just, like, makes a difference, like, if I'm trying to get into bookstores, like, I'm just, my goal is to get to the airport. Like, I feel like you have made it when your book is sold at the airport. So um, in order to get there, I just need lots of pre-sales. So Amazon, Barnes & Noble, indie bookstores, it's been a tough time for your local bookstores. Maybe go in there and ask if they can order it for you. Ooh, that's a nice idea. Um, but yes, it was very fun. Like, I I didn't know what kind of vibe I wanted to go for, and I was really nervous in the beginning, so I'm actually going to redo the introduction because I was sounding like a freak, like, just trying to be, like, all, like, presidential. But then I realized, like, I'm like, I need to lean into this. Like, I need to talk like my normal self, but my God, every 10 seconds, they would, like, buzz me and be like, you got to slow down. And it was just really hard, but I have to go back two more times, and it was really fun. That is really fun. And also, oh, yesterday I posted podcast episode with Dana. Yes, it I is, heard the reviews are in. I was listening to some of it, some of it, and it's just so funny. Like I actually, I never make you listen to like shit I do without you, but I, I, I think you should listen to it. Do you know when the last time you said that was? What the, the first Patreon with Dana, and wow. I did listen to it on a plane. Wow. Yeah. So here we go again. Um, I feel like we have a lot to cover. We have the I CMAs know. to recap. I think like... We have so much TV to recap. I think we should... Not dilly-dally. Not dilly-dally. I do think we should dive right into the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <coughs> and Jackie, can you just remind me what day it is? It is Thursday. Okay, wait. Before I dive into my little skit, um, in my book, in the intro, there's a, a use of remiss, devastated, and heartbroken. And um, I was reading the sentence, and they kept making me redo it, and, and I had to explain to them. I'm like, no, I'm saying it weird on purpose. Like, it's, it's a podcast thing. And they were like, why are you pronouncing remiss, devastated, and heartbroken so weirdly? I'm like, I really don't have time to explain it, but just, like, let me do my thing. Yeah, and, like, so offensive that they didn't listen to your podcast. I know. Also, are you able to, like, ad lib at all while so, you're reading your book? So I asked before if I was, like, the publisher, if I was allowed to. Because, like, you know, that's so me. Right, like, to throw in a laugh, a parenthesis. Oh, like, laugh, yes. Okay. But, like, hardcore, like, me doing stand-up. Like, no, no, but, like... If you wrote something in the book, but then you have like an additional thought about it. Yeah. So I did that twice yesterday. Um, they said like, don't push it because it really needs to remain true to the script, yeah. like the text. But um, I talk a lot about writing my book, like the process of it. And just like, I break down the fourth wall, like the fact that I'm talking and writing in a book. And in an audiobook, you're not supposed to do that because it's not a book. It's an audiobook. So it was like very confusing having to like change a few things. But for the most part, they really recommend that you stick to the the text of the book but you know that's hard for me I don't know I just feel like that's so fun like there are like like little treats in an audiobook that you can't get from the text oh no and like in my um book like I reference a few songs that just like made me the woman I am today and of today. course you're gonna sing them and I'm um, I literally walk in and I'm like she's like do you have any questions I'm like no but like I'm allowed to sing right and she's like no but Mariah Carey sings on her audio they're her own songs oh. so it's a copyright infringement I'm, I have this secondhand serenade lyric that just really molded me as a woman you should reach out to secondhand serenade because I feel like do you know how hard it was for me to say the lyric instead of like belt what is it? it? Tonight will be the night that I will fall for you over again. And there's a whole story about it really shaped me as a woman. Tonight will be the night that I will fall for you over again. Don't make me in the like fifth, seventh grade just like with my black eyeliner. Like that song was my life. If I had to like guess the one song lyric that you're going to fight for in your book, I would have never guessed it'd be that one. Well, it's the one that shaped me most as a woman. And if you want to know why, you'll have to read my book coming out January 26, 2021. I guess I have to read it again. Yeah. Um, but I do, yeah, so that was really, really upsetting for me that, like, I could not belt. That and is upsetting. I, I literally said, I'm like, but Mariah Carey did it. She was like, yeah, they're her songs. <laughs> um, but sorry, I was asking you, do you know what day it is? It is Thursday. Which means that today's episode is, of course, brought to you by Thursday Boots. Just in time for the start of boot season, we have received a few of the new releases from our friends at Thursday Boots. Thursday Boots is the New York City-based startup that designs really, really comfortable, high-quality boots and sells them at the best direct-to-consumer prices. They handcraft their boots in the same North American and European facilities as brands that charge two to four times the price. But by cutting out the retail markups, they offer the highest quality boots at very accessible price points. My favorite over-the-knee boots that I've been wearing for like the last year 
or uh, from last season's Thursday boots, and we just got a few of the new ones from this season, and they just like they know what's up. They know the style. They're all I can say. I have very low tolerance for like heels, but all the boots that I have from Thursday boots are incredibly comfortable. Totally, the type of heels that you can wear all day. The boots are really just like the perfect staple, ba- staple basic shoe that is going to carry you through season to season. Mm-hmm. Great quality great styles if there ever was a year to invest in more comfortable in more comfortable shoes it's now if you want fast fashion or shoes that rarely make it out of your closet do not shop at thursday boots thursday boots is an investment in comfort timeless style and staples that will last for years you deserve you deserve more comfortable boots without the high retail markups because thursday boots is all about year-round honest pricing at the lowest sustainable markup possible they never have sales or discounts but they're giving our listeners free two-day shipping on their first order, and they always offer free returns and exchanges, so you have nothing to lose by trying out your first pair. Go to thursdayboots.com slash toast, and you can have a pair on your doorstep before next Thursday. That's T-H-U-R-S-D-A-Y-B-O-O-T-S dot com slash toast for free two-day shipping plus free returns and exchanges. Check it out. Tell them the morning toast sent you. Sign on, get sickening boots. Okay, first up, country music took center stage at last night's 2020 CMA Awards. Longtime CMA's MC Carrie Underwood passed the baton to Reba and Darius Rucker, who teamed up to co-host the live ceremony from Music City Center in Nashville, t- Tennessee. The CMA Awards honored and showcased the biggest names in country music, as well as emerging talent dominating the country music airwaves. So I'm going to go through all of the categories and share the winners, then we'll talk about our favorite performances. How does that sound? It sounds great. I just want to say, like, it was so, it was so good, and I want everyone to know that they all did a good job. Like, Reba and Darius were amazing. The producers were amazing. Like, the whole show was amazing. Please keep doing it. Like, I feel like we went from having no award shows to having virtual award shows to now having, like, small... To having no audience. And now we have, like, the audiences, the stars, which is really all we need. Like, yeah. I didn't need one more thing than what I got. And I just, like, want the Country Music Association and everyone who was a part to of last night... To give themselves a big round of applause. To know that, like, we appreciated it so much. And it was literally the highlight of my week. And I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't even going to watch the whole thing. I was no. just going to watch until Real Housewives of Orange County started. A hundred percent. And then I couldn't take my eyes off of it. It was just brilliant performances. Everyone gave it their all. People in country music are so talented musically. Like, they don't have any, like, backup dancers. Like, it's just so real. And it was so good. No, like, I didn't think we could become bigger country yeah. music fans but like last night just solidified like everything that I love about country music and and I, I will stand forever me too and you know what it really made me realize it's like not only do I like love music and country music it's like I think if I had to ever choose like between watching the Grammys or the CMAs like I would want to watch the CMAs totally and I think if I ever had the opportunity to go to like the biggest pop music festival or the biggest country like to be backstage at one of them sipping out of red cups I would want to be at the CMAs 100% like and that's what I realized last night like I've always been into country in addition to everything else but I think in the last like two years like my love of country has and I'm only now realizing it has become like my main interest in music yes I only listen to country music yeah I agree. Okay, so Entertainer of the Year, which is the big prize, went to Eric Church. Yeah, so here's the thing. I have a lot of respect, and I, and I understand Eric Church. I'm not a big follower, but I get, I get it. Um, I did feel like it was Luke Combs' ear, and of course everyone's just going to say, Claudia, you're saying that because you're obsessed with him and his wife, and while that may be true, I do think it was his ear. Well, he did win Album of the Year, Luke Combs, What You See Is What You Get, and, and he male won vocalist. Male Vocalist of the Year. So, you so how do you win those against Eric Church, but somehow he was the Entertainer of the Year, but if your vocals and your album technically were better? Well, I just want to say, Eric Church has won Entertainer of the Year before, right? Many times. And Luke Combs has never won it, and I think one day he will win it, and if I were him, I wouldn't want to win it for the first time in 2020 because like it doesn't mean as much there wasn't as much to entertain yeah no when it's like and when Eric Church won Luke Holmes was so happy for him and I also think it's like he didn't want to win this year yeah you know and he still went home with two awards so like let him have his big award like on a year where he's touring and he is the entertainer of the year not just like on this throwaway of a year that's fine and fair but okay Single of the Year, The Bones, Marin Morris. And Which, she also won Song of the Year for that song. And I believe she also won Female Vocalist of the Year. Yes. Now, The Bones was, first of all, Marin Morris's most recent album is so stellar. Like, And it's it's for everyone. Yeah. Even if you don't like country music, even my friends don't like country music and they love Girl. If I can just suggest some songs, A Song for Everything and All My Favorite People Do, which is with one of the brothers from Brothers Osborne, whom I just think he's so hot. Um... Her album is so good, and I kind of forget because it was a little bit like a long time ago, but in terms of this year, but the Bones like really took over like 
pop and country. So she was sweeping all these awards and I'm like, oh, right. Like the bones was like such a big song. Like my yeah. friends who don't know country knew it. And even she performed it last night too. And I was listening to it and like the lyrics are so beautiful. And for me, it really resonates because I always sing when the bunk is good, the counts don't matter. And I feel like that's so true. Like when you have a good bunk, the counts don't matter. And also when the counts is good, the bunk don't matter. Cause then you're just hanging with your counselor all day. For sure. And so that's why I really love that song. No, I totally agree. Vocal group of the year went to Old Dominion. So happy for them. And it would have been a disgrace if they went to anyone else. Um, only because like Old Dominion has released literally 10 amazing songs at, back to back in the last year. And they had an amazing year and you just can't deny it. But sadly, Rascal Flatts was nominated in that category. And Rascal Flatts was also supposed to perform last night. But someone in their band tested positive for COVID. Literally the most unlucky band in the history of country music were supposed to go, they broke up, not broke up, they were tired, supposed to go on their farewell farewell tour last summer, COVID hit. Now finally they get to come back, perform at the CMAs, someone gets COVID. So they're just like, it's not their year. Yeah, I know. I didn't know that. I know. I didn't know they were supposed to perform. They posted I it on their Instagram. I didn't know that something was taken from me. I know. I'm so sorry to be the one to tell you. Oh my God, and like while we're filming, like I don't have time to like deal with this. No, I know. I have to just move on. Very upsetting. And so like, of course I wanted them to win because they really did release an amazing album, but Old Dominion was so like clearly the winner. For sure. I just want to say justice for Lady A. I know. Um, They put out an album this year that is so stunningly beautiful. I feel like they don't really win a lot of awards anymore. They I feel don't. like when they first came on the scene, like they swept yeah. and now they're just like in the background. Charles Kelly did perform last night, but I don't know why this last album didn't get a lot of play. I do also feel like because of all the controversy with their name, yeah. like they're just like, no one wants I to know. talk about that. Let's talk about Charles Kelly. Yeah. The performance he gave with um, Carly Pars. I love that song. I hope you're happy now. Written by Luke Combs. Because Lee Bryce tested positive for COVID. I he saw did? yesterday. I think he was supposed to perform. I with her, of course. With her. And then last minute, she had to find someone else in his register. Oh, I thought it was weird that it was him. I'm pretty sure. Because I saw yesterday morning that he wasn't going to be at the CMAs because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And then I, Charles Kelly sang. So I was like, okay, these Definitely. two things make sense. Um, so then that makes sense that it was a last minute performance. Because Charles Kelly, like, he is always, like, incredible. And he was just, like, not doing a good job on the stage. And I'm like... Are you okay? And then I realize now I realize it's probably because he got one day's notice and he never heard of this song before. Yeah. Okay. Then vocal duo of the year was Dan and Shay, which of course. there are so many great country vocal duos like Florida George Line, Maddie and Tay, Brothers Osborne, and Brooks and Dunn. But I feel like Dan and Shay can win any year. They are they do great things for country music in general. Like they brought Justin Bieber to the CMAs. They're the publicists for country music. Like yeah. they go out into the world and they do amazing collaborations with Tori Kelly, Justin Bieber, and they they do a good job. But it really comes back around to Scooter Braun. Always. Because he manages them and like he manages Justin and he, he makes those things happen. And I thought that performance was beautiful. Like the three-part harmony. And honestly, Justin Bieber looked like so hot and handsome. And I never really think he's cute. But his harmonies were just like speaking to my soul. And I thought they all did a great job. That was a really good performance. Also, I don't know if our husbands have been hanging out. But this morning, my husband was singing low. They haven't been low. hanging out. And I was just like what i'm so low, 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 lonely okay now let's talk about performances oh also Were those all um, the awards no because oh here sorry musical event of the year went to i hope you're happy mm -hmm. now carly parse and lee bryce music video of the year went to bluebird by miranda lambert i'm glad she finally won something because she was nominated for everything, everything. And didn't win and that song bluebird is just spectacular. Miranda, like Miranda, that's beautiful. I have to once again, and I've said it a few times already, like I do have to apologize for sleeping, not only sleeping so hard on Miranda Lambert, but like actually not liking her and thinking she was like messy. No, and she, like coming for her a She was bit. a little messy. In my defense, like she did give me some material to work with, but I take it all back and she's such a queen. And that song Bluebird is so good. And they kept on showing clips for the music video where she's like in a cage, in, a cage in blue feathers. And I thought it was really beautiful. So I'm glad that she won for that. Me too. And the new artist of the year, a very competitive category, the nominee were Jimmy Allen, Ingrid Andres, Gabby Barrett, Carly Parse, and the winner, Morgan Wallen. Honestly, any of them could have won I and agree. I would have been so happy, but like as an, like Morgan Wallen's number one fan, it, it feels like. I'm so happy for him. It was so funny that they made a joke about him quarantining. He finally performed more than my hometown and stopped performing whiskey glasses. And it was just a beautiful sight to behold. So I'm just, I'm always confused about the CMA new artist of the year category because you could be a, nominated multiple times. Carly Parts was nominated last year too. Morgan Wallen has been nominated before. And Lauren at 
Atkins, Thomas Rhett's wife, presented and she said, my husband has been nominated in this category twice. So yeah, I guess you can be nominated until you win. Yeah, I guess. But I agree. I could have made an argument that any of them deserved to win. And I am just like, since two days ago, like so in love with Jimmy Allen and he's so handsome. And I didn't realize that the song he performed, that that was his song. Like I've heard it on the radio. He is a PJM nation. And the whole tribute to Charlie Pride was so cute and Charlie Pride being so nervous like I don't know why like watching him like made me want to cry like he was just like a true old man pjom and it was just precious precious I was also thinking about Jimmy Allen I feel like if we were living in a normal world right now like he would have been performing that song on The Bachelor this season yes and then that song like you know what I mean I feel like it was just like a super bachelory song that's a really really good call so I feel like he was robbed of that opportunity I also feel like it could have been Jordan Davis slow dance in a parking lot oh yeah I feel like he might have already played that while they slow danced in a parking lot um so I I have recently become obsessed with that song and I think I already told this story I texted my friend Jordan yes no you told me but I don't think you told oh so my group. friend Jordan is like always wanting to know like good country music so I'm sending him music all the time and I've been obsessed with Jordan Davis slow dance in a parking lot and my friend's name was Jordan Davis <laughs> and I sent him this song I'm like do you sing this song and he was like oh my god I've been listening to the song on Spotify so much I didn't realize but that's not why I wanted to tell the story I want to tell the story because I've become obsessed with him and somebody messaged me and they were like oh my god you love that Jordan Davis song I don't know if you know you guys interviewed him at the CMA red carpet I'm unfamiliar but you snubbed him I so, of course, I had to go back and see the atrocity that we committed. This was last year? So, what had happened, what had happened was, it was the beginning. So, it was, like, kind of slow. We were just, like, talking to anyone. And he came over, and he was eating candy. And, like, two minutes into his interview, Carly Pars came over. So, you know, the, the red carpets are cutthroat. And at the time, I didn't know who Jordan Davis was. And Carly Pars was nominated for Nordis of the Year. And there was just, like, a lot going on. So, we literally just... <laughs> Like, turned our backs on him. Like, but we gave him two minutes? Were we nice? Like, what did we say? We said, what's your name? <laughs> we said, what's funny. your name? Okay, but, but I've like, shown an apology to Jordan You've got to start somewhere. A hundred percent. And I just, now I'm obsessed with him. But I agree, Jimmy Allen is a great call for someone who could have performed on The Bachelor. And his performance was amazing. Luke Holmes performed his new song, Cold As You, which was sensational. Sensational. We had like Nico in the front row being a fangirl. So and supportive. It, it was like the closest we got to a concert. Like I yeah. felt like I was watching a concert. Morgan Wallen was excellent. I just love him so much. Yes. I thought the opening was really interesting. Like not what I would have expected. No, and I didn't recognize darks long-haired darks it wasn't until the middle of the show when he came back to present something and his name was there again that i saw it was darks no you know who he is he's locks bentley <laughs> he also performed with the the other the osborne brothers brothers osborne the brothers osborne who always there's the one who doesn't look like the other one no so there is like a um a trend in country music with duos where it's like one of the duos does all the vocals and then the other guy does everything else. Yeah. Dan and Shay, Shay sings, Dan literally does everything else. He writes a song, he writes the music. Florida Georgia Line, Tyler Hubbard sings mostly and Brian Kelly writes all the songs. I can't believe his name is Brian Kelly. Same with Maddie, Maddie and Tay. Tay. Um, Brothers Osborne. It's like a trend, but it, it really works no, very well. But it, it's like they, you compliment one yeah. another. It's like you and I, you do all the vocals. I do do all the vocals <laughs> and you do all the story picking. What um, other performances? Don't in the world oh, full of hate be like beautiful. Reba was just literally performing four hundred times. Like there, she killed it. There's someone that we need to call out. We've spoken about her a little bit on the show before, but last night was really her debut. Ingrid Andres, yes, performing um, more, more hearts, hearts than, than mine, mine which, which is, is such a beautiful song, an amazing song. Like it makes me so emotional, even though like I don't relate to any of it. You know. Yeah, I, I did have a problem with the crying. I'm sorry. Well, I just want to know why she was crying. Me too. I, I, I hope everything's okay. I hope everything's okay too, but... Maybe she was just like excited and overwhelmed and cr tears of joy. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It didn't strike me as I good. didn't mind it. I didn't like it. It was a little, like that song is really emotional. Like maybe she has her heart broken right now and she's crying. And Darius Rucker is just like a wonderful host. Him and Reba did a great job. I, I did like them better than past hosts. I think they're like funny and old and that's like a good combination. Mm -hmm. What did you think about Gabby? Barrett's performance I thought her and Charlie Puth were excellent Gabby Barrett is very talented like vocally also I realized when I got here I'm wearing my pants inside out but whatever um Gabby Barrett is very talented and Charlie Puth like really is a wonderful musician and and he like added great harmonies I thought that was a great pairing I loved that mm -hmm. and oh and her husband was on guitar and she's just yes. like a supportive wife yeah I love 
I love that song. I love her. And I, I'm glad that you're coming around. Yeah. I don't think I, was I ever like not around. I feel like you've been hard on her. Well, I just think like when we've interviewed her on the red carpet, like she never wants to talk to us. So it's like, okay. We're, we're not for everyone. That's you know? so true, Jackie. You know? Any other standout performances that you wanted to discuss before um, we move on? Did, who did we miss? Kelsey Ballerini performed yes. Hole in the Bottle. And I finally realized while I was watching her, well, also because she had a middle part, she was giving me lookalike vibes. Of? And I, I feel like you need to watch the performance again in order okay. to see it. But it was someone who was actually asking for us to share our lookalike with her. Tanya Rad. Okay, I definitely see that. Yeah, there were like certain angles last night and I was like, oh my God, I was getting major Tanya Rad yeah. vibes, especially with the middle part. And so I was glad I was able to button that one up. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know what, what I felt was interesting? Maybe a shift in last night's um, CMA Awards. I feel like for so long, like every award was being like given to and nominated to like Jason Aldean, Blake Shelton, and Luke Bryan. And honestly, like the three of them were not there. And I kind of liked that. I feel like they're great, but they're not the best country music has to offer. And I feel like forever it was like literally the Luke Jason Blake show. Yeah, but it was Jason Aldean singing Devil Went Down to Georgia, right? Yes, he, he was excellent. He was excellent. And that fiddler, ooh. And got, you know what? We got to get him on the roof. The fiddler <laughs> was everything of the sort. And when Reba said, give it up for Brothers Osborne, and she didn't even mention the fiddler. Maybe the fiddler is part of one of their bands. Of course, but still, yeah. he stole the show. Yeah, that was a great little fiddle we got. It was an amazing fiddler moment. Yeah, we love a fiddler. We do. Put him on the roof. Particularly on the roof. <laughs> okay. Now with that, I think that is our official CMA recap. It was an amazing show. Thank you to everyone who made it happen for us. It was really wonderful. It was Bruno's first time watching a country award show, and he was just really catching a vibe. I mean, I literally caught the biggest vibe. I was just not expecting to get so much like serotonin from this award show. Like it was just making me happy. No, I just thought I was like going to do my job and watch yep. it and talk about it. And instead, like I got so much out of it. A hundred percent. Okay. Next story. Switching gears. Nikki Bella says her ex John Cena called her after the birth of their, of her child, not Ugh, their child. Something about like their entire relationship just like gives me a pit. Really? Yeah. I just don't think that it's, no, I just, it makes me mad because if I ever really sit down and think about it, I'm like mad at what he did to her. I know. But Nikki Bella told us weekly this week that John and I will be tied forever. All I've ever wanted Why? was for him to be happy. She said, so with the baby, he reached out to Brie and I both. We haven't had an individual conversation in gosh, I don't know how long, but it was very short and sweet. That's sweet. Yeah. I mean, I don't think John Cena is a bad guy, but like, it just makes me mad for Brie, I uh, know Nikki and for women. Like he just... I'm just mad at him like and I'm not over the breakup and I took it really hard yeah I took it really hard too I'm getting over it and like the more that they find like real love and joy and happiness mm -hmm. I'm able to move on I think I know why I took it so hard hmm. because if I really think about it Nikki Bella and John Cena were perfect for each other like compatibility wise looks wise like they were just really like a perfect pairing and the fact that like he went out of his way to like not make it work like made me mad and wasted so much of her time yeah that's what it is yeah I guess but she wouldn't be where she is now yeah yeah you know, whatever everything happens for a reason yada 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 but I'm just upset on her behalf and I think we should all be yeah, I know. I can't believe they still talk, though. I feel like that's just, like, a function of the fact that they were in each other's lives for five years, but then, like, five years from now. Like, it, sometimes, and this is how I used to feel about going to camp, sometimes you need to spend the exact amount of time, like, without something as you spent with it in order to, like, undo the time. I feel that. You know, so in, like, five years, So she after will have, two months at camp, I need, you need two months at, at least. You need at least two months at home. After two months at home, like, you can no longer be camp sick. Got it, got it. You know it. what I mean? Yeah, I feel that. it's like you've been here longer than you were at camp. What are right, you doing? Right, right. <laughs> I feel that. Thank you. Okay, next story. Wow, this one was a stunner. Pregnant Emma Roberts bears her baby bump on the cover of Cosmo. And it was just beautiful, beautiful, stunning, and smart. Beautiful. Emma Roberts is one hot mama. The pregnant star of Netflix's Holiday covers Cosmo's December 2020 issue with her baby bump on full display in a stunning pink set from Frankie's Bikinis that I'm sure is totally sold out by totally. now. Totally. It's not the only belly-bearing look that she um, is modeled for the magazine. She also posed with a croquet mallet in a cream-colored Prada crop top and hot pants and strutted her stuff poolside in a black cut bra and Wolford underwear. Ooh, I didn't see those additional photos. I mean, this is so fabulous. Like, I just love that we're celebrating pregnant women on the covers of magazines, which I feel like 
hasn't really been done that much. And this is just absolutely wonderful. I'm just like, we were just talking about this with Emily Radikowski and her digital Vogue cover. Oh, yeah. Like, I would love to see a pregnant belly on Vogue on the cover of Vogue. No, I think this is so excellent. I think the photo shoot was like fun and fresh and young. And Emma Roberts is just like all of those things. And I feel like I'm, I didn't really expect in 2020 for like this to be where she's at, but I feel like she's just living her best life. Living her best life. I'm really happy for her. And I'm, I think this is a great move by Cosmo. And it recently, there's actually been some stuff in the news about Garrett Hedlund, who is my favorite actor, and her boyfriend slash father of the baby. And it was actually revealed, I think, in January, he had a DUI. Yeah. So he's been, like, struggling with his sobriety. And I think he's in a better place now. And I think a baby definitely does that to you. And... I don't know, it's just very exciting to be in that little family. Yeah, I, I, I like such a talented family too. Wait, speaking of Emma Roberts, Julia Roberts. I was just going to say, so that makes Julia Roberts the baby's great aunt. Great. Oh, that sounds like an old, old woman, yeah. Is she, wouldn't she be like a grand aunt? Because okay, I've great, always wondered that. Great is like double. You know, aunt and then great aunt doesn't make sense because... It's mother, grandmother, great grandmother. Yeah, so I think she's like a grand the grand aunt. The grand aunt. <laughs> I love that. Last night before the CMAs came on and I realized my YouTube TV wasn't working, I went to Netflix just to like put on a movie for Bruno and I, and I started to watch My Best Friend's Wedding, which I realized is a movie I had never seen. I saw it a really long time it's ago. Julia Roberts, Cameron Diaz, and Dermot Mulroney, like a Hallmark King. No, it's Hallmark King, Georgia Rule King. Hello. Oh my god, totally. And um Something else, King. Was he in Murder on the Orient Express? No. Oh. Well, anyways, it was so fantastic, and I was just starting to really get into it, because I really love the two of them, but I was really like, am I the only one who's rooting for Cameron Diaz and Dermot Mulroney? Like, Julia Roberts, I know she's the protagonist, but like, um, she's really being mean. I love Cameron Diaz. So anyways, I have to finish that movie, but that, I was just treating myself. Content upper? Con- I, it's feeling like one, but it's- it, Finish it and then let us know. I will. I will. It was definitely like a movie that we would have watched for Toast Movie of the Day. Yeah. Wow, Toast Movie of the Day is so long ago. No, th- those words trigger. Yeah, no, they bring me back to like a really dark lockdown place. Yeah, like, and don't even say the words. What are the words? What was the first one? The first what? Ricky Gervais. Invention of lying. Don't say it. Don't say it. Okay, next story, some legal news. Selena's family... At, uh, Selena's family and Netflix are being sued for over $1 million over a new series about the late singer's life. What? So there's by who? A, so by the man who produced the 1997 Selena movie. There's a new Selena TV series coming to Netflix. It's called Selena the Series. Is it dramatized or like a documentary? Dramatized. Oh, interesting. And I think we reported some of the casting news a while back, but the show is set to premiere in December. Okay. Now, Moctezuma S. Parza, who produced the 1997 Selena movie about the late singer that starred Jennifer Lopez, filed a $1 million lawsuit last week against her father and sister, Abraham and Suzette Quintanilla, as well as the streaming platform, claiming that he owns the rights to her life story but was shut out of the new show, according to TMZ and E! News. Okay, now explain something to me because I don't really understand, like, life rights. Okay, you own, how do you, where do you purchase the rights to someone's life? I don't know. Like, I would think that this would be the the family. Right, so it's like the dad and the sister are on board Mm -hmm. with this new TV show. And and I guess they cut him out of it and he has some sort of like ownership over her life rights. Which How can you own someone's legacy I like have no in idea. perpetuity? I have no idea. It just seems so unfair. I mean, who knows? He's just suing. And honestly, it's like he probably thinks he's going to get something out of this. But really, he's just like... Looking like a dick. Garnering so much press for this show. Like I had forgotten yeah. about it and I didn't realize it was premiering in December. And now I'm really excited. And honestly, hasn't Selena's family been through enough? Like now no. we're suing her? Come totally. on. Totally. This it's really year, low class. Yeah. So that's the latest legal news. I don't understand how someone who's not a family member could own her life rights. And I just am hoping that justice does its thing. No, and I feel like you can definitely like purchase the life rights like for a movie. But I don't think that gives you like ownership over this person's legacy like in perpetuity for the rest of the lo- Till time is over. Like, that makes no sense. He's suing for damages from an alleged breach of contract, claiming he developed an idea for a television treatment of Selena's younger years back in the late 90s, but it was never fully realized. So okay, so you had an idea 20 years ago, and like, more actually 30 years ago, and now we're just supposed to like remember that? Yeah. 
This guy sounds like a little bit like a narcissist, if you ask me. Yeah, no, it's like, oh, goodbye. Goodbye, Theo, come. Theo. Come to mama. Come to mama. We had a really nice run. I got him, like, way longer than I thought I would. And with my RLS, I keep crossing and uncrossing my legs and disturbing his peace. By the way, we haven't heard an update in your RLS um, journey. Can On my, you? Yeah, my journey um, through RLS. You know, it's been better. And I did get the magnesium pills, but I really have been forgetting to take them. Like, does anyone else just... Like forget to take no vitamins time for vitamins no and honestly it's like a whole thing because if you take it in the morning before you eat anything you could get like nauseous and throw up so then you have to eat but then by that time like you're on your way with your day like who is remembering to take vitamins yeah but i also think it was like the first in the beginning i was probably like low iron or whatever and i think i'm just like eating better i don't know i think it comes and goes it flares up uh, by the way i do think that that it's as well flary. seasonal super flary Okay, our fifth and final story is someone who I know you don't like discussing on this show, but she's talking about a relationship and spilling a little tea. So Okay, who is it? Chloe Kardashian? No. No. You love Chloe. You know I do. I thought it was gonna be like more Tristan bullshit. Julianne Huff alludes to feeling I don't not like you her. You don't like her and Brooks Lake. There's there's definitely a thirstiness, a palpable desperation in the Brooks Lake of it all. And I, I know better than to update you with like details of their relationship but she's alluding to feeling lost after her high profile relationship with Ryan Seacrest oh and now she's talking about those times I mean those were crazy times because say what you want people have been saying things about Ryan Seacrest forever but I don't think he's gay I mean, and that's not where she's going with this at all. And she talks about why they broke oh, up. And it. And sorry, I just took a liberty. <laughs> no, and at the time, they said they broke up during due to scheduling conflicts, which we always know isn't true. Lies. But during an Instagram Live conversation, she talked about how living the high life with an ex, believed to be Ryan Seacrest, shaped what she wanted out of life in a career. She said, it was 2013, and I had just gotten out of a relationship that was very high profile. I was on private planes and yachts and living in a very, very well-off house, and my life was pretty different from where I grew up. She shared that she didn't feel like she had earned the luxuries she was enjoying, adding, I had just gotten out of that relationship because I wanted to create that for myself because because I kind of felt like I didn't deserve it. That's interesting. I mean, sounds like a dream. You know, yeah. flying in planes and living in houses that you didn't pay for. But, but I also to feel each like, their own. I feel like Ryan Seacrest is kind of like a two-year relationship kind of guy. Definitely. Like, he's a little Leo like that. Yeah. He doesn't go for, like, all the, like, models. Like, he does, He goes but, for the less obvious choice. Yeah, but he goes for, like... Hot young things. Yeah. Who's he dating now? Like a hot young thing. That yeah. probably didn't... Like a no-name hot young thing. Yeah. Let me Google it's it. It's kind of smart because nobody... People are always talking about Leo being this like, you know, bachelor and dating such young girls and the girls are always super high profile and famous. And it's a pretty smart Ryan Seacrest. Nobody's talking about like him being, you know, a bachelor or dating young girls because we don't know who the hell they are. Shayna Taylor is who he that is sounds dating. familiar but oh he's his girlfriend she's his girlfriend of seven years now oh hmm interessant that is a long time that is a long time we'll give well, it to him Julianne Huff I just would say I, you know I want to go complaining about all the private jets you're flying well, around she, no she was just saying that she didn't feel like she deserved it but it inspired her to create it for herself to sure. get it on her sure. to earn it on her own um all right, OC and Salt Lake City TV recap segment brought to you by TheraBreath, the world's fastest growing oral healthcare solution because it really works. We've been raving about them for the past few weeks ever since we started working with TheraBreath. I have all the mouthwash flavors in my house. I suffer from a very, very severe case of duty breath and so does my husband. And all the products from TheraBreath are focused on your oral health and specifically improving your breath, strengthening your teeth. They have gum that is like gum with the sole purpose of making your breath smell good. And it's such a relief to just carry it around. We actually have some right here behind our flowers. It's just a fabulous line of products. They have mints, tooth, uh, mouthwashes. It's just fabulous. Um, their mouthwash, which is probably their most popular product, focuses on, a various, on various oral healthcare issues like fresh breath, bleeding gums, gingivitis, anti-cavity, and teeth straightening and improvement. Also, if you have dry mouth, this might be a good product for you. All of their products are kosher, which is fabulous, vegan and gluten-free, and they're all made in the USA with the most ethically sourced ingredients. Um, if you want to check out some of their products, if there's someone in your life who might need to help in the breath department or you yourself need help in the breath department, go to therabreath.com slash toast. That's T-H-E-R-A-B-R-E-A-T-H dot com slash toast and use the code ATOST, A-T-O-S-T, for, to save 25% off on your total order from the website. So the website that you have to use if you want to get the 25% is therabreath.com slash toast. And the promo code is a toast, A-T-O-S-T. 
A-T-O-A-S-T, and save 25% on your total order. Again, promo code ATOAST, therabreath.com slash toast, therabreath. It's like therapy for your breath. Beautiful. Okay. Can we get Orange County out of the way? No. Can we start with Salt Lake City? Like, I want to give it my, like, okay. I have everything. Let me pull I, like, up my notes. I literally have nothing to say about Orange County, so. Me neither. Like, I actually could not recap it just because it doesn't deserve our airtime, if I'm, like, honestly, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with that. Let's just start with Salt Lake City, see where it takes so us. So, my notes, like, I was really just trying to remember everyone's name. Mm-hmm. And here's where I landed at the end of the episode. Live for Jen. Yeah. Live for Jen Shaw. Live for her Shaw Chalet. Um, a little confused and sort of trepidatious about like her wealth and her clothing and her house when her husband is a football coach like at a university I don't know how much that pays but it just seemed like they might be living beyond their means my other favorite is Heather because she's just everything of the sort she drinks but she's Mormon and she's like one foot in one foot out I thought the whole like religion conversation was just fascinating I mean I don't know anything about Mormonism except I did see Book of Mormon but I don't think that was really meant to educate um and I just think like the whole show being centered around LDS as they call it is really interesting it's like a totally new format totally and also all of the women have such interesting backgrounds they all I mean there are a lot of different religions in the mix. It's not all Mormonism. And then we also have like Whitney who was excommunicated from the Mormon church. So like, does that mean she's no longer a Mormon or she just like can't go to the church? I'm sure that we I think that means she's no longer a Mormon. But like she gets to choose what she wants to believe. believe. So I'm sure all of that will play out on Watch What Happens Live last night. Andy said that Heather throughout the season is like extremely open about her struggles with certain parts of Of the Mormon faith. And I think that that is a very interesting like element to add to an already like interesting group of women so many of the women like they obviously married well but they also have like really interesting and successful sounding businesses businesses. and I every time they were explaining like you know my husband does this and so we and then I also do this I was like wow there's just so much going on I agree there's so much fodder and I was really impressed by all of them I'm also so impressed that pretty much all of them have very long-term marriages yes and I We've gotten used to Real Housewives being women who are single, but all of the women are very in very committed relationships, except Heather, I think, is the only single one. And I think that that also gives the show like a lot of meat. Yeah. Um, uh, Like to me, what what I heard had heard about the show was that there was a uh, a housewife on there who was married to her step grandfather. And that's really what I was looking forward to when, you know, getting involved and I, what's her name? Mary. Mary, Mary um, did not disappoint. She's going to be like the, the hot mess of the season. I mean, I don't know what was more shocking. The fact that she married her step-grandfather, which is pretty shocking, or the fact that like everyone was talking about her clothing and the two times I saw her show up, like she literally looked insane with the yellow tights and the fringe boots and then that green dress. And she's so like Sutton Strack, like, I love your dress, Valentino, runway. Like so annoying and it's so ugly. Like I honestly, I could have found a dress at H&M that was cuter. No, it's like she has very eclectic style, but it's all designer stuff. And yeah. I, act, I, I like it. I really liked her. Oh, I think the- what? Oh my God, I did not like oh, her. Oh my God, I liked her. I think she's so interesting. I love that she can't help but say what she thinks. I think not only is it interesting that she married her step grandfather, but she's also a pastor. Like first she's, lady, she doesn't no, like the word pastor. But when she said first lady, I was like, oh, so your husband's a pastor. But right. then she explained that like she does the pastoring, but she calls herself a first lady. Yeah, and that is so interesting. No, she's very interesting. And also, but fact, I did not like her. The fact that the central fight in this episode was about the fact Smell. that she said that someone smelled like hospital is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. It's so funny. And I just have to say, saying someone smells like hospital, I I know exactly what smell. smell. The smell was in my nose when she said it. Saying someone smells like that is literally so fucking rude. Like, it's the meanest thing you could say. Like, it's a horrible smell. It's the smell of death. Like, that's what it is. It's the smell of rotting flesh. Yeah. No, I know. And, like, air conditioning. But, like, that just is, is a new is a new insult. Uh, it's so low. It's so low. <laughs> but she didn't low. even mean it to be mean. She was just stating Matter facts. Matter of factly. And like the fact that she couldn't even like not say that. Right. I just think that she's oh, like so interesting. She's interesting. She was just like bothering me. Like I, she was like a little too like unapologetic in the first episode. And it's like Jen Shaw was saying like you hurt my feelings. Just like you, she's a pastor. You would think she would be like oh I'm so sorry. 
Get over it. But she also, starts cursing, and then that other blonde woman came over. Yeah, that other blonde woman. So this is what I think happened. That other happened. blonde woman was Thursday. This is what I think happened. Are you ready for my theory yeah. of how television works? They had that footage of Jen Shaw and Mary getting along from six months ago. Yeah. I think that six months ago, they filmed some sort of pilot for Salt Lake City. Yes. They got all these women together, and people were getting along. Then I think that blonde woman was maybe up to be in the cast, mm-hmm. and she was starting stuff by repeating that it's. she said it smelled like hospital. Totally, totally, totally. Six months months later you they know mary the light. they get the green light mary's like oh jen and i like we're getting along but someone told her what i said right and so that's why i think that blonde woman comes in i think when someone invited her into the conversation she was like okay it's my time to be on the show no, you're so and mary right. shut her down was like you're not a part of this by the way i thought her her husband slash step grandfather would be much older looking yeah she looks older than him no they look like an age-appropriate couple. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about what happened there. Also, because the grandmother said that, like, if you want to inherit, like, the business, you have to marry the step-grandfather. But what's the business? Because is that the church? The church. Okay. It's, like, a very, I think, lucrative church. I also fell down, like, a small rabbit hole on her on TikTok. Um, there's a girl on TikTok, The Talk of Shame. She does, like, all Bravo content. She's everything of the sort. I just sent you one of her videos about Candace. Oh, I didn't watch it yet. Sorry. Oh, you should watch it. Um, and she's, like... There's she was alluding to like there being some like weird foul play between, you know, Mary, her step grandfather and like the grandma, like kind of alluding to like the fact like maybe they killed her (laughs) so they could get married and like take on the church. It was very dark, but like it's it is worth it's just a crazy story. And it and just it opens you up to like people like no, like conjecture. Like these are deeply interesting people. Hundred percent. Who, you know, live lives that. You, we will all be like learning from and and I think that that is so interesting. I thought it's a subculture. It is. And I but also there are so many like we have Meredith who is Jewish and she yep. has a Jewish family. We Jen have Jen was born Muslim Mor- Mormon, Mormon, Mormon and converted to Muslim. Yes. Islam. And I actually thought that her um reason for leaving Mormonism like her husband was like I'm black and we were only allowed into the Mormon church in like the 70s. Like I actually really respected that decision. Yeah. And like her her thought process like made a lot of sense. Yeah, 100%. Um, Lisa, who we haven't spoken about yet, but she... Is Mormon. Born Jewish, converted to Mormonism. Her mom like got proselytized. Yeah, I guess they like never felt akin to the Jewish faith and were just like looking for a different religion. is Jewish. Yeah, that's what I said. I immediately did not like her. That's what I I wrote down in my notes. You know what? I didn't like her on the show, but I liked her on Watch What Happens Live. Oh, okay. I'll watch it. Whitney, I just think it was, you know, really like strong coming out episode one getting married, but okay. But it was a vow renewal and I really liked her. Yeah, she she seems like she's really smart in her interviews. Like she's very clug. Like she knows what's going on everywhere, but in person she's like kind of quiet. And I like that her and Heather are cousins because like they'll have like their backs hopefully. And I like them both. But who was she cousins with? Heather. Oh yeah, Heather was at the wedding. Yeah. I like Heather. And it's so interesting that Heather and Whitney have like deep roots to like the origins of Mormonism. Joseph their, Smith. Gr- their fourth great grandfather was the bodyguard for jo- Joseph Smith and Brigham, and Brigham Young. Young. No, I'm learning so much mm-hmm. about Mormon, like BYU, Brigham The fact Young. that you have to side like An a code of code. conduct. Yeah, no, it's just super interesting. Like I feel actually like whenever there's like Mormon representation in media, it's like negative, like 100%. always like Book of Mormon. It's like, it's not fair. So I'm actually looking forward to like getting to know. I also thought it was interesting. Like the whole premise of being a good Mormon is like perfection, like on every level, like fit, perfect family, perfect thoughts. Like I thought that was super interesting. And that makes for like a great premise of a housewives show. Cause like yeah. nobody's perfect. No, I mean, of course. And also it's like, you can't drink, you can't swear, you can't, you know, if you're going to be perfect, like you're not going to be talking about someone. Like, but I didn't know that you could like bend the rules. Like I thought if you were Mormon, like you could not drink, but well, Heather they, drinks. They're calling it Mormon 2.0. Lisa calls that. Got Cause it. she has a tequila company. I think so. After oh. watching Watch What Happens Live, I liked Lisa in the episode, but then on Watch What Happens Live. I never heard of Live, any of her tequila companies, did you? I think that, no. I think that she is like the thirstiest one. Like I think that she's watched every single Real Housewives is like studying the playbook. Oh, no And way. like wants to be, like, yeah, I think this is like her absolute dream come true. I am team Jen Shaw. I'm just worried about her finances and team Heather. I'm also a little worried about her finances because she's the only one whose house we didn't see. We, yeah. We didn't We saw her business. We saw Mary's house. We saw everyone. And here's what I wrote. I. Jen had an amazing chalet. No, like that is the dream house. Also at Meredith's birthday party at Jen Shaw's house when Jen had a cake come out. I totally thought her husband was going to be in there. Did you? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Heather, we didn't get a house. Meredith, house was very meh. But Heather said that her ex-husband is a billionaire and that her business is worth $20 $20 million. million. People say things. Um... 
I feel like we're gonna have a Leanne Locken moment with Heather. Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm really feeling that way. Meredith, I don't know if you remember house. It's like very yeah. '70s uh, triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very meh. Lisa really has a nice, nice house. She had nice views though. Yeah, but they live in Utah. They all have nice views. Lisa, Lisa had a great, very nice like McMansion. Like it looked like a real model home. You know, it had like a all yeah. the columns. Whitney, uh, we didn't see her house, but is that the, where she was getting married? Was that her house? I don't know. It looked like it was close to the houses next to her, but I'm not judging. And Mary, <laughs> did we see her house? Yes, it looked actually like um, a house in Potomac. Like. Uh, it was like brick. It wasn't super Utah-y. Okay. But it was it was big. I think you would be okay with it. But it did look like... It I was, saw... It did look like it was next to the neighbors. <laughs> oh, fuck. I, but I did see Porsches. I did see Range Rovers. I saw lots of wealth. I saw lots of nice clothing. I saw lots of Louis Vuitton on Jen Cha. She wore Jen a scarf. Jen Cha, everything. She wore a scarf that just like changed my life. Jen Cha and um, Mary both dress very, very well. Another indicator that Heather might be a Leanne Locken situation is that purse that she showed up to Jen Shaw's house in was just a disgrace. Also on Watch What Happens Live, Andy asked if like he was playing a game with them and it was like, is wearing a fake bag, like fake designer stuff worse than having no designer stuff at all? And everyone agreed with that except for Heather. Okay, so I'm telling you, um, I... I think it's really suspect that we saw everyone's house except for her. And I think we're going to have a Leanne Locken moment. Okay. But, but I really I think, liked Heather. And also, I think that she's the one who's doing the voiceovers in all the previews. Like, in oh, Utah. That means, that means she's important. I think that she is, like, maybe the backbone of the, of the season. I liked her and Jen Shaw immediately. And also, I was, like, kind of liking Lisa because I didn't see a reason not I can't, to. How about that? Can you tell Lisa and Meredith apart? I can, but it takes a minute. I can And everyone's name, I, like, need to pause and then I'll... Because we have a Meredith and a Mary. Yeah. It's so hard to learn these women's names, but... Yes, but we're, we're doing it. And I didn't like that Lisa was, like, being weird about Heather. It's one thing to not remember someone Agreed. from college, fine, but then, like, to not remember them, but then, like, say that she, like, flashed her titties. Like, yeah. what? No, and, like, she, in Mormonism, like... And also, like, that's, like, she either did that or she didn't. Like, there's no in-between. Right. Also, it's just a little midriff. <laughs> no, it was it was rude. Like she's definitely it was thirsty. Rude. But I thought it was interesting. I think they said this about her or Meredith. I can't tell them apart. But like, if you want to go to a party at Sundance, like Lisa, that's you have to know Lisa. Mm -hmm. I forgot that Sundance is in Utah. Yeah, it was just very very interesting. I, I never would have chosen Utah for the next like city, but I think it's an excellent choice. An excellent choice, and the way that it's even being filmed in the, the new um, soundtrack or the church, sco the score. <gasps> Oh, it's oh, so good. It's so good. It's like in Beverly Hills, you have like, doo -doo -doo -doo, yeah. like, and I was just loving the whole vibe that they curated over there. I think it's, it's going to be excellent. The taglines were very meh, but it's season one. I will give a, and pass. I just, I think that they found a great group of women with already established relationships, deeply interesting people on so many different levels. And I really am. I'm all in. Me too. No, I think it's very good. I'm very much looking forward to the rest of the season. Speaking of things I'm not looking forward to, Real Housewives of Orange County. Like, I honestly don't even want to recap it. Like, I don't even know what I would say. Honestly, the only part worth recapping is Bronwyn um, helping her son get ready for drag. Because oh, that yes. was so inspiring. And she's such a good mom. And, and her husband, too. Like, they didn't make it weird at all. And, like, they made him feel so comfortable. And, like, to put that on TV was so brave. And to be that open with him... I just thought it was so amazing. And that was literally the only part of the episode that like was even remotely interesting. Like worth mentioning. I, I totally don't even know agree. what else. They're setting oh. a great example. You know. What I did on another thing uh -huh. was Gina giving a victim statment. I didn't even realize that like he could potentially go to jail. Yeah. And no, there's he? just like so much. I feel like. Well, we'll see what she decides to do. I, but there's just so much going on like in her personal life. Like it's just so layered. She also like still can't drive. Yeah, no, I forgot that. And also we said last week that, you know, if I were Gina, I'd be annoyed that Bronze Moon's making me go to AA. Like I would have skipped that part. But Gina actually has to go. And Gina had, right, Gina had offered. I didn't know that. Yeah, and it's like court ordered that she goes. So I think that is actually a perfect activity for them to do together. The only um, super interesting part was Elizabeth. Versus she, Shannon? No, when she, oh, yes. That was interesting. And I'm good, glad. Like, I think that Shannon has been at, like, the top of the group, doesn't have to impress everyone mm -hmm. for, like, years now. And good, someone is going to, you know, give her a taste of her own medicine. I agree. But that was really funny but when Gina was like, it's literally, like, OC housewife versus OC housewife. Like, who's the richest bitch? Yeah, but they were being, like, very, you know. Um, Obnoxious. Very Carol and Luann, like, one-uppy. Yes. But when Elizabeth was saying how she loves her nieces and they, like, fulfill her maternal instinct, and I was like, she's just an Aunt Sneetchest all the way. Like, yeah. we love 
we love a loving aunt. But she said that she set up $1 million trust funds for them, but she hasn't told them yet because she doesn't want them to murder her. But that I was, was on TV. No, I know, but I, I thought that was hysterical. No, I actually really like her, except I did come to the conclusion last night, and you know, I'm very focused on the material things. I do think her beach house is her only house. No. Because they keep saying Elizabeth's beach house, but does she go anywhere else? Give her a chance. I think it's her house. And it's still nice, I'm just saying. She's coming up. I, I think that she has another home. I, I feel like she does. I feel I like she said that. I don't. Okay, we'll see. I mean, but even if it's her only house, like, it's the nicest beach house that we have. Yeah. Right now. Well, it's, it's like actually beachfront. But no, no, but it's also, no, because I think Emily's house is nicer. No. Um, Emily lives in the nicest house out of anyone. Yes, but like, it's, it's really, not on the beach. it's next to the neighbors and it's not on the beach and it's like in a suburb. It's like what you described. It's big. Um, it's big, but. It's, it's a big mansion. It's how you describe it, just someone from Utah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like when the, the kids went, they pulled up and they're like, where are we? Oh yeah, we're in Laguna. <laughs> um, other than that, like I, I genuinely have nothing to say. Like nothing happened. I, I can't believe we're not even at the vow renewal yet. No, I know. I'm sure they're like building up to it. It was fine. I, I like. The, the season's fine, but that was just like a, a filler, filler episode. Yeah. But it was fine because we had like a really busy night of yeah. TV, so I couldn't have like taken on too much more. No, I, I really couldn't. Like I'm truly overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it. Anything else you want to say, add, jump in, recap? No, before? tomorrow's Friday. So exciting. Yes. We'll see you then for the party. Thank you guys so much for listening to The Morning Toast, the Millennium Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast. Anywhere podcasts can be found, so that's Spotify iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us. The Morning Toast and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. We hope you have an amazing day and we'll see you tomorrow for our final episode of the week for Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Bye. Goodbye.